In this video, we will be doing the following problem. In each of the following diagrams, the two triangles are similar. Confirm AA similarity and find X in each case. So you will notice that in these two, you're given two angles. In these two, you're not right away given two angles, but you can find them. In general, for similar triangles, you need AA similarity or SAS similarity. In these, we will be using AA similarity. So now let's go to the upper left over here. We have a single tick mark and a single tick mark, and then we have 105 degrees and 105 degrees here and here. So we have AA similarity. From there, what we need to do is match up the sides to the angles. So you can see across from the 105 degrees here, we have 32, and across from the 105 degrees here, we have 24. Then across from the single mark on this triangle, we have 24, and across from the single mark on this triangle, we have X. So x over 24 equals 24 over 32. So let's write it out. x over 24 equals 24 over 32. Then rearranging, we have x equals 24 times 24 over 32. Dividing 24 and 32 by 8, we get 3 and 4. And then 24 over 4 is 6 over 1. And then 6 over 3 is 18. So x equals 18. Now we will come over to the upper right here. You'll notice we don't have angles. However, we do have a set of parallel sides. And remembering that corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent, these two angles are congruent, and then these two angles over here are also congruent. So we have AA similarity. As a note, we also have a reflexive angle here, but we don't need it. Any two sets of congruent angles gives a a similarity. From there, notice that we have numbers or variables assigned to all of the sides except for this one. But seeing that this is 40 and this is x, we have 40 minus x for this side. From there, we have two ways we can attack this problem. The first one would be to recognize we have two parallel lines here and two transversals to that same set of parallel lines. So we could go across this way and then we can go across this way over here. The other way we could do it is to recognize we have two similar triangles, the small triangle here inside of the big triangle there. And because we have a similarity, we can do that. Since this is a tutorial video, we will do both. So let's start with the two parallel lines and the two transversals. So we have x over 8 equals 40 minus x over 24. From there, rearranging, we get 24x equals 320 minus 8x. Moving the 8x over, we have 32x equals 320, and then x equals 10. So now we'll do the other solution. We have a set of similar triangles here. We have the small triangle here and the bigger triangle here with a set of parallel sides. So we will do 27 over 36. 27 over 36 equals 40 minus x over 40. So we have 40 minus x over 40. And then 40 times 27 is 1080 equals 36 times 40 is 1440 minus 36x. Moving over the 1440, we get negative 360 equals negative 36x. And again, that gives us x equals 10. So we have two solutions here. This top one uses two parallel lines and two transversals. So we compare a piece to a piece and a side to a side. The bottom one here compares two similar triangles, the small triangle here and the big triangle here. So we compare a whole side to a whole side and a whole side to a whole side. Now one caveat, something you don't wanna do that people sometimes do when they get nervous, they'll do this 27 over 36. 27 over 36 equals 40 minus x over x. They'll use this and this and compare it to this side and this piece here. That is comparing a side over a side to a side over a piece. And that does not work. So now coming down here, you'll notice that the tick marks here and here have suddenly disappeared. The reason for that is to show why you need AA similarity and then why you need to use those angles to get your corresponding sides. 
you might be tempted to say, I'll just look across the 70 here and here. I look left, I look right, I look left, I look right. And then we compare 8x minus 2 to 36, and then 72 to 27. That would not be correct. These two triangles were specifically made to show that. The way we got from this triangle to this triangle is by scaling this one and then flipping it over a line this way and then rotating it. So we scaled this triangle, got the mirror image of it, and then rotated it. So let's go back to this triangle. This was scaled and then rotated this way and that way. So you could technically just look right and look across the 105, look right and look across because there's no reflection. For these two triangles, you cannot do that because we scaled it, reflected it, and then rotated it. Take a second and make sure you understand that. So now we bring back the tick marks and we can see in the big triangle across from the tick mark is 8x minus 2 and across from the one tick mark in the small triangle is 27. Between the two marks on the big triangle is 72 and then between the two marks on the small triangle is 36. So then our proportion is 8x minus 2 over 27 equals 72 over 36. So let's write that out. 8x minus 2 over 27 equals 72 over 36. Then rearranging, we get 8x minus 2 equals 72 times 27 over 36. And then reducing 72 over 36 is 2 over 1. And then 2 times 27 is 54. From there, 8x minus 2 equals 54. 8x equals 56. And then x equals 7. And now we come over to the bottom right. You'll notice we have one set of tick marks, but not another. However, we can recognize that these two angles are vertical angles, so we do have another set of angles. So we have our AA similarity. From there, we recognize that across from the one tick mark is 70, and then over here across from the one tick mark is 21. Between the two tick marks on the big triangle is 40, and between the two tick marks on the small triangle is X. So then x over 40 equals 21 over 70. So let's write it out. x over 40 equals 21 over 70. Then rearranging, we get x equals 21 times 40 over 70. Reducing the 40 and the 70 by 10 gives us 4 over 7. And then 21 over 7 is 3 over 1. And then 3 times 4 is 12. So x equals 12. So to recap, the upper left here was a scale and a rotation. It's fairly easy to envision the proportion. So here we had two parallel sides. So we can either do parallel lines and transversals, or we can use two similar triangles with a pair of parallel sides. And you can do it either way or both as a check if you want. On this one in the lower left, this triangle was scaled, reflected, and then rotated. So you cannot just go left and right of the 70 degree angle. You have to look at the two angles here and the two angles here and figure out what the corresponding sides are. In the lower right, we were given one set of congruent angles, and then we can get another by vertical angles. And then again, you mark your corresponding sides and do your calculation. As always, you'll want to do each of these at least twice. Make sure you understand how to do them and what the differences are. Work them until they become very clear, and then you can move on.